Hello, Mishpacha. It's Courtney, America's Jewish mother. Long time, no see. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've been off booktube for, for a few weeks now. Um, and I, like, the longer I stayed off, the harder it was to just come back and make a video again. So I finally was sort of in the mood to do it today. So I was like, I'm going to make a Friday Reads video and get back into the habit. So we'll see if this sticks or not. Hopefully it will. Um, so I'm not going to catch you up on all of the books that I've read that, since I've not been on here. Um, but I will catch you up on the ones that I've finished in the last week. Um, so I did finish a week ago uh, Exit West by Mohsen Hamid. This is a book that I think kind of made the rounds on booktube. Uh, three or four years ago when it first came out. Um, it's a fairly short book about two characters uh, named Saeed and Nadia who are in love um, and they are in a war-torn unnamed country that's you know probably in the Middle East somewhere, say Syria, somewhere like that. Um, and then some magic doorways start appearing that enable them to go through the doorway and then magically be in a different geographical location. Um, which seems like a good thing because it allows them to get away from the war-torn country that they are currently in, but going to a new place also brings its own challenges um, and dangers with it as well. So uh, that's the basic premise of the book. Um, I ended up giving this three stars. I did think there was some very nice writing in it, and I appreciated the sort of overarching fable of it, um, because it's, it's really sort of about immigration uh, when, you, when you get right down to it. What didn't work as well for me war was the lack of characterization. So we don't really get inside the heads of either Saeed or Nadia. Um, we do learn a little bit about them and about their relationship, but they just didn't feel like they were fully developed, fleshed out characters. And so for that reason, I did not feel as close to them as I wanted to feel. Um, but I would definitely still recommend this book if you've not read it, especially if you like reading stuff about immigration. Um, or like books that are um, more sort of fables in nature and don't mind uh, your books coming with a good side of magical realism. Um, so three stars. I then uh, went on kind of an audiobook extravaganza and <laughs> finished like three books in the past week that were all audiobooks. Uh, the first of those was The English Spy by Daniel Silva. This is the 15th book in the Gabriel Elon series. Uh, to my knowledge, there are, um, as of this year, 22 books in the series because Silva comes out with about one a year. Um, so I'm going to eventually make my way through the whole series. I've not, been, I've not been reading them back to back, maybe one, you know, every other month or so for a while now. Um, so this was the 15th book in the series. I liked it overall. I gave it three and a half stars. It continues to follow Gabriel Alon, who is a, an art restorer by trade, but also used to work for um, a branch of the Israeli, of Israeli intelligence and keeps getting pulled back into missions for the office, um, as it were. Um, so I, like I said, I gave this book three and a half stars if I didn't say that already. Um, I did like it overall. I like especially that Silva took a different approach with this book than I've seen him use in some of his previous novels because one complaint I've had about this series as I've read through it um, is that sometimes he'll recycle a plot that he's already used in a previous book and that irks me because I feel like you should be more inventive than that. Um, so he did take a different tack with this book and I, I appreciated that. Um, by this point in the series, Gabriel is also working with someone who was once uh, an enemy of his um, and I really enjoyed the banter between the two of them and I like seeing that relationship develop. I did feel like the book was very convoluted Silva was basically just like, oh yeah, as far as this plot goes, I'm just gonna throw 18 things to the wall and see what sticks. So, um, so that part I didn't like as well, and I do think um, 
you know, it's a book I would mainly recommend if you're already a fan of the series because while I think Silva does try to introduce um, characters and events that have happened in previous books in the series, and he does um, a, a pretty good job of that, I just think it's easier if you've already been following along this whole time and know who some of these people are. So, um, so three and a half stars. I then listened to another audiobook, which was um, Long Time Coming, Reckoning with Race in America by Michael Eric Dyson. Um, this came out in 2020, the same year that there seemed to just bloom a cottage industry of anti-racism books, and this was one of those. I think it came out in December of 2020. Um, Michael Eric Dyson is a, is a reverend, um, I believe in the Baptist Church, and he sets up this book as a series of letters to black victims of mostly police brutality. Um, so there's one to Eric Garner, um, there's one to Emma Till, there's one to Clementa, Reverend Clementa Pink, Pinkney, um, and uh, Sandra Bland, and, and a number of other people too. Um, so I gave, it a, I gave this book three and a half stars. I think it's fine as a sort of anti-racism primer if you don't really you haven't really read too much other anti-racism stuff. Um, I think he does a good job at conveying um, the severity of the situation in the United States with with respect to police brutality and like definitely does a good job of highlighting how these are not just isolated incidents. It's clearly a pattern. It's clearly repeated throughout history and it's still ongoing to this very day. Um, so all of that I thought he did a good job with. I did not think the letters conceit worked very well, um, mainly because he didn't just talk about the death of the one person who he was allegedly addressing the letter to. He also worked in other stuff and other victims of police brutality to the point where you forgot who he was allegedly talking to initially. Um, just. He would occasionally insert things like, my dear Brianna, or my dear Sandra, or whatever. So that didn't work for me. I thought it should have just been more focused on that particular person. There was also one chapter that basically was kind of a rant about cancel culture that I just sort of fundamentally disagreed with. Um, and again, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this as the first book if you've never read anything about anti-racism before. Instead, I would probably recommend Ijeoma Lewis, So You Want to Talk About Race, or um, Robin D'Angelo's White Fragility, or um, Emmanuel Acho's uh, Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man, if you are a white reader who, again, is sort of just starting to dip your toes into, into anti-racism. Um, but it was fine overall, so three and a half stars. Um, I then finished uh, The Ladies Auxiliary by Tova Mirvis. This is a book that was gifted to me last year by Lindsay of Lindsay's Book Life in our holiday book exchange. Um, and I kept putting it on my TBRs earlier in the year and never getting to it, so I finally finished it this month, so that was good. Um, so this is a story about an, an, a, a close-knit Orthodox Jewish community in Memphis, Tennessee, um, and the book is actually narrated in a collective first-person we voice, um, and it's about an outsider named Batsheva who moves into the community and she's kind of free-spirited, and then the teenage daughters of this group of Orthodox Jewish women kind of start clinging to Batsheva, um, and some other stuff happens, and, you know, Batsheva sort of finds herself at the center of, of controversy, um, because people think, you know, the fact that, that things are going awry in the community is because of her, and not because of, you know, stuff that they did or whatever. Um, so I ended up giving this book three stars. I found that for a lot of the book, not a lot happened. It just kind of spun its wheels for a while. The members of the collective we voice who constitute the Ladies Auxiliary never really developed separate personalities for me. Um, so, you know, a name would be mentioned and I'm just like, yeah, who's this person? Whatever. <laughs> 
Um, because they all just kind of blended together, um, which I guess maybe is sort of part of the point. Um, but yeah, and I just found them to just be kind of gossipy yentas, and I was like, y'all could just not do that, and then you wouldn't have these problems, most of which you're inventing, <laughs> so, um, so I thought it was fine, especially with kind of highlighting um, an insider-outsider dynamic, and I do think it's a fairly accurate representation, at least from my experience of what kind of an insular orthodox Jewish community looks like and how it tends to operate, um, but, you know, nothing to really write home about, so three stars. Um, I then finished uh, a book that I read as an ebook. Um, this was The Widows of Malabar Hill by Sujata Masi. Um, this is the first in the Purveen Mystery series. I liked this overall. I ended up giving it 3.5 stars. Um, it is about Purveen Mystery, who is the first female solicitor in 1920s Bombay. And we learn about how she comes to have this role, and we also learn about her personal life, and then about a murder case that she's dealing with in the present day timeline of the novel um, and how she ends up kind of helping to solve that. Um, so this book was kind of a slow, it had a slow start for me, but once I got to about the middle of it, things really picked up and I ended up kind of racing through the second half of it. Um, and I really liked Praveen as a character and I cared about her and what happened to her, so I will probably continue with the series at some point. Um, so I would definitely recommend this if you like books with strong female protagonists or historical fiction or crime and mystery novels or, or things like that. Uh, and then the last book that I finished recently was another audiobook, uh, which was Infinite Country by Patricia Engel. Um, and this book I also gave three stars to. It's mainly about a family who immigrate from Colombia to the United States and the dangers and challenges that come with that. Um, because what ends up happening is part of the family stays in the United States and then the other part of the family um, goes back to Colombia. Um, and so, yeah, it's kind of about the experience of being an undocumented immigrant in the United States. Um, there was some very nice writing, and I do think that the book successfully conveys uh, aspects of that experience of being an undocumented immigrant. However, I also felt like the author was just trying really hard to make me feel bad for these characters, kind of, again, just sort of throwing everything at the wall, hoping something would stick. And, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like the things that happen in this book don't happen to undocumented immigrants, because I'm sure that they do, but it was a case where there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of plot and not a lot of character development, and if you've been following my channel, you know I'm a very character-driven reader most of the time, so I want to feel invested in the characters, I want to know them, I want to care about what happens to them, um, and again, I felt like we were kind of held at a remove from the characters, so it was hard for me to sympathize with them, even though, again, a lot of bad stuff happens to them. Um, but I seem to be in the minority with this opinion because I think a lot of people have read this book and liked it. So, you know, by all means, if you're someone who likes plot over character development or appreciates the messages and overall themes of a book more than the character development, you will probably like it more than I did. So um, I ended up giving this book three stars. Now, in terms of what I am currently reading, I am currently reading my last uh, prize, I mean, my last book for the Booktube Prize of the semifinals round. I've been judging nonfiction this round, um, and I've read all my other books except for this one that I'm currently working on, which is Daniel James Brown's Facing the Mountain, the true story of Japanese American heroes in World War II. I am a little over 100 pages into this, um, so I will certainly be finishing it in the next week or so because I have to have my ballot in by the end of the month. So um, I have been recording my thoughts on the Booktube Prize books as I have progressed, um, so there will be a reading vlog of those that goes up when Robert announces the um, 
results for the finals round, um, probably the, the 1st of August. Um, so I'm reading that. Um, and I also started yet another audiobook. <laughs> Um, so I recently started um, The Other Black Girl by Zakia Dalila Harris. Um, this is about a, an African-American woman named Nella Rogers who um, is the only black woman working at a publishing house in New York City. Um, and then suddenly another black woman named Hazel is hired. Um, and I haven't gotten too far into it yet, but my understanding is that some some strange things start happening um, and it's, it takes on sort of a, of, of a thriller vibe um, but so far Hazel has started working there and she and Nella have met each other and Nella seems to like her and kind of hopes that they'll be friends and we've kind of explored some of the racial microaggressions that she has to deal with on a regular basis in the workplace um, so not super far into that yet but enjoying it so far um, I'm also currently reading a play, Venus, by Suzanne Laurie Parks. I just started this yesterday, and I'm probably going to finish it tonight before I go to bed. Um, it's really good. <laughs> so this is an experimental play about a woman who was um, taken from Africa and exhibited under the name the Hottentot Venus or the Venus Hottentot. Um, whose real name was Sarcha Bartman. Um, and so yeah, we learn about her life. We learn about kind of the details of her exploitation um, and the various people in England to whom she is, is passed along. Um, so yeah, this is really good. Uh, I won't say anything about a possible rating since I haven't finished it yet, but it's really good. So, um, and then the last book that I'm currently reading is The Lost Shuttle by Max Gross. Um, this is about a small remote village in Poland called Kreskol um, that we're introduced to and it seems like it kind of operates as if, you know, the setting is say the mid to late 1800s or something like that. Um, and like I said, it's, it's a very remote village in Poland, and no one really goes out of it, and the only people who ever come into the village is this traveling band of Romani people who come through maybe two or three times a year and, you know, trade goods with the, the Jewish people that live in, in Kreskel, because um, it's an all-Jewish community. So, what ends up happening is um, a couple from this village have a falling out and then the wife disappears and the husband disappears and there's some talk that possibly the husband could have murdered the wife and run off and so they think it's important to send someone to the next neighboring um, city uh, to possibly alert the police since they actually don't have a police force in this village because it's it's that small and you know nothing really ever happens that major. Um, so they send someone out and then when he comes back he informs them all that World War II has happened <laughs> many years ago at this point because I think we're actually in the 21st century by the time the story takes place and no one ever knew that any of this had happened and no one's familiar with modern technology or anything like that. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's really where this is going and um, right now I'm learning about the guy they sent to the outside world named Yankel and, and how he sort of found it and, um, and his, his thoughts and reactions to everything. So yeah, this is, this is good, enjoying this so far. So that is everything that I either recently finished or I'm currently reading. Thank you for watching this if you made it all the way to the end. Um, let me know if you have thoughts about any of these books, I would love to hear that. Please do let me know what you've been reading and enjoying lately since again I've been off booktube for a, a minute. So um, I hope everyone is staying healthy and well. I hope you're doing good reading whatever you're reading and until next time, what do you call you, call your mother?